Welcome. My name is David, and this is Ewar Guitars. World Headquarters. It's also my shop. Is that a little too much? Maybe so. Alright, so we've got the last couple of operations to do before we can start uh, carving down on the body. This is a template to uh, drill in the recesses or router in the recesses for the controls. I use a three quarter inch bowl bit for that. Makes a nice little curved shape in there they sit down into. Now I've got to cut the uh, notch or the, uh, the opening for the blade switch and I use my Dremel tool for that with a 1 16th of an inch bit and I'm just setting up a little fence here for it and I'm going to uh, drop it in there. I'll cut, oh I'll probably cut a total of maybe 3 16 deep. By the time it's all said and done it'll work out good. And here's my uh, body shaping templates. Now each one is uh, a little bit smaller than the one before and as you can see I'm setting the depth here so the first cut will sit right on top of where my binding is going to go. And I'm using that same three quarter inch bowl bit for this. And uh, the first pass I make it's uh, three eighths of an inch deep. And I'm checking my binding here. And each successive pass I uh, raise it slightly to, uh, to achieve the ultimate uh, carve in the top of the guitar that I'll then eventually grind out with sanders. Okay, now that we've got the general shape of the carve cut out with the router, and I have my uh, level, uh, this is cut all the way down to the very top of where the binding is going to go, uh, it's time to bend the binding and fit it and get it glued in place. So to do that, uh, here's my binding. This is that Stumac binding, it's curly maple. And uh, I'm going to use this tube right here. And this tube is filled with ammonia. This is regular old ammonia, lemon scented ammonia. I'm gonna use this heat gun to help me bend it. And I'm gonna use this uh, template that I made. This is one half of the template. This is a template I make that I'm gonna tuck that binding once it's soaked in ammonia a little bit. It'll break down the fibers, soften them up to where they'll bend. And I'm going to heat it up and lay it down in this template and I'll put it in my drying box and let it dry overnight and it should hold its shape. I've done this a couple times and so far it's worked out pretty good. So we're going to give it a try again. All right, so I've soaked the binding in the ammonia for probably 45 minutes to an hour. I think it was probably an hour. I'm going to wrap the end with a little aluminum foil. That's the end that's got to bend around that horn which uh, it needs a little extra help to, to make those tight bends. So I wrap it in aluminum foil, which basically acts as a heat transfer. And I'm gonna put the, and it also keeps the uh, uh, ammonia uh, in from evaporating away when, they, when I put the heat gun on it. So as you can see here, those large bends, it bends pretty easy. And that's very brittle stuff too, so it's impressive that ammonia will do that. And I tuck it down in there. And that, that template I have fits the binding uh, perfectly. That was actually made with the same tools I make a guitar body with. And as you can see, I'm bending it in with these different tools and tucking it down in. Now when I get up to the end where it's got to go around the horn, that's where it gets a little tricky. I heat it at once and I'll probably heat it again here. I try to use some tools to smoothly bend it around that curve. It's not easy. Um, Anyway, but this side worked out really well. So I tuck it in and I keep bending it. The curly maple is very brittle stuff, but that ammonia really helps out a lot. Now you can see I just screwed something down. That was a piece of the template that I take off to get the binding in there. Then I could, uh, it's the proper curve, so I push it in gently. Uh, following the curve that it's going to seat up against. So there it is, and I'm going to put it in the drying box. Well, here's the next day I took it out of the drying box. It sat in there overnight, probably 15 hours. It dried up really nicely. And I'm going to pull those sides off of the template to get the binding out. And it held its shape really well. 
Now when I glue it on, it's all, except for a couple little spots, it's going to be almost the perfect shape of the body. Now that's very brittle again, so it's very easy to break it. Now this side I wasn't so lucky. I broke the, uh, I actually broke it bending it around the horn. You can see I've got it in two pieces. And I tried a couple different times to fix it. And uh, I eventually got it fixed. I wound up having to, to cut the two ends. Luckily I had enough to, uh, enough extra <clears throat> where I could cut the ends. Here, here's where I'm trying to fix it. It just didn't work. I was trying to, I put some wax paper down and I tried to put it back in the template and drip in some uh, thin CA glue. That didn't work. I just made a mess. So I ended up having to clean all that off and, uh, and I eventually got it fixed. It turned out nice. Recut the ends and I installed it as two pieces. Now here I'm checking the uh, length. I'm getting ready to glue in the first side I did that didn't break. So I tape it all in so it's fitting just where it's going to be. I take my nippers and cut it probably an eighth long and I got a chisel. I'm going to chisel the end straight. Then I'll take a little sanding block as well and I sand it so it's a really nice square end. And that's going to be dead center on the joint of the, of the body. That'll be right on the center line of the body. So I got a little sanding block. I'm sanding away on it. And that wound up fitting nice too. So what I'm doing, I'm gluing on this one while I'm fixing the other one. So I can see here it fits really good. Now here I'm trying to fix the other one. This is where I was shaping it. and I'm, I'm glad I followed through with this. Uh, in the meantime, I also had another uh, piece soaking in case I had to make another one. But uh, this one turned out all right. So now here I'm gluing on the first side. I use a Stumac tape and it, it's really nice to work with. It's very, uh, very sticky and it's uh, it very stiff. It doesn't, uh, not stiff, but it doesn't stretch. I use a little brush. I'll, I'll glue up a little piece and get it glued into place and uh, tape it. And then I'll glue ahead a little bit further. I don't want my glue to get tacked up, so. And that came out really nice. I was pleased. This is probably the best one I've done so far. So here's the first piece of the second one I'm putting in. This is after I fit the ends and I figured out how I was going to get it to sit in there. Same deal. I'm putting a little bit of glue on with my brush. You don't want too much glue dripping out when you're messing with that tape. So here's where I'm, after the first piece dry, now I'm gluing in the second piece, getting it to fit good. See, I had to router it out first before I uh, put on the binding so the tape can hold it down. And here's the fun part, I start grinding away on it. That's a, a 40 grit disc in a CA or DA grinder, not a CA. That's a 40 grit disc. And I use that uh, to, to get the, the main bulk of out what I need to take out. I'm drawing a little, drawing a little line there not to cross that line because that's the area I have to keep flat for the pickups and the, and the bridge. Anyway, I just grind away at it. I've got those steps already cut in with the router, so that get, gives me uh, lines to follow. But it's still a matter of doing it by eye. It's all by eye and by feel at this point. I've got a smaller one. Now that, that smaller grinder, that's a three inch grinder. The other was a six inch, or sander. And that has an 80 grit uh, uh, pad on it. And the big one, I have a 40 in it. Now I'll switch that to an 80 after a while. But it's just a matter of going around, grinding, it's all by eye. Okay, now I'm going to get ready to cut the neck pocket. My necks are uh, about an inch and three sixteenths deep at the heel, not including the fretboard. So I usually like to cut them about an inch and an eighth deep. Uh, that leaves just a tiny little bit of the mahogany part of the neck uh, proud of the top of the guitar, which works out just right for my, uh, my the uh, 
bridges I use. This is getting a hip shot, a string through bridge, by the way. So I drill it out first, now I'm routering the depth. And I've gotta use two different bits. I use first my short uh, flush trim bit, and then I'll put in the longer one to get all the way to the full inch and an eighth depth. And it goes good. I just take out a little bit at a time. And it uh, came out real smooth at the bottom, a nice fit. I'm getting my, uh, my neck template to check the fit and make sure everything looks good. And it looks nice. Okay, now that I got my neck pocket cut, I like to go in and cut this little uh, wrist contour on the lower horn. I use my, uh, I, that's a two inch rubber sleeve off of my spindle sander. And I just got it bolted onto a 3 8 threaded rod and I put a little steel tube over the end so I could hold it with my other hand. And it works really nice. I just keep working at it until I get the shape I want. And I do the neck pocket first so I could see where I'm going when I'm using the sander so I don't cut into something I don't want to. Alright, now I'm going to start uh, shaping the body contour in the back, the belly carve. I'm using my Shinto rasp for that, an amazing tool. Of course I lay it out by hand first, I got a line to go on and then I uh, start rough shaping it with that. Then I'll get my, uh, I want to check the depth too because remember this only has a 3 8 thick body on the back. So I want to make sure I don't go too deep. Then I block sand it, I use my uh, spinny sander. And I also want to check for the flatness of the cut. That's important to me to keep that really flat. And now I'm setting up at my drill press. I got this little uh, jig to hold the body in place while I drill my output jack hole. Of course that's a 7 8 hole. This jig really helps it to stay nice and straight and keep it well aligned as I'm drilling it. So since this is a carved top guitar, I can't get my final depths from my controls until after the top has been carved. Now I've got to route out the back to get the thickness just right so the threads on the uh, potentiometers and the threads on the screws for the blade switch fit properly. So that's where I do this. Always do this fitting and testing at this point. So, uh, so I'm not messing with the finished guitar body uh, trying to do this. So I always do it at this spot. And I touch up the shielding paint in the back and it's ready to go. Well folks, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I've got a lot of sand in my future. I've got one more set of holes to drill in this thing and that's for the bridge, which you can't do until the next time. So my next video on next Thursday is going to be working on that neck laying right over there. I really appreciate you all watching. If you dig this sort of thing, how about you give me a like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you all again next Thursday.